if you make an in Harry, you know, it clearly is obvious that you're not very bright. And I mean that in the same business sense of, you know, when you're dealing with corporations, particularly that are paying you millions of dollars, then you really have to be careful how you treat them, particularly if you want more millions of dollars. As ever, let me explain. Hi, good morning, Neil Sean here. Nice to see you. It's interesting, as I often say here on the show, simply because with Harry and Meghan, their latest Netflix series, you know, the one that you've all forgotten about already, Live to Lead or Lead to Live or whatever, as they're absolute tanked. It's bombed, you know, despite all of that heavy publicity and the fact that they were only executive producers introducing certain segments. People simply haven't warmed to it, you know. Nobody wants to watch it because, once again, you just know they haven't put their heart and soul in it. They didn't do the interviews. That was left to someone else. And more importantly, when you think about it, it's not really what we know them for. Even their own docuseries, the whole six episodes, have now dropped out of the top 200. So that didn't even last a month. You know, it's not going to get a big return for their company, Netflix, you know, the ones that are paying them so money. So now there's even more problems as ever for Harry and Meghan regarding that mega deal. Now, as we know, they decided to ditch Pearl. Invictus is hanging by a thread. But now, according to a very good source, and as ever, we say allegedly, but um, Netflix are unhappy with Harry and Meghan. And it's all down to their six-part docuseries. You see, the problem for them is that they were told they were going to have some incredible material. And what they got, as I told you, were they were hoping to get 12 episodes out of this. What they actually got in the end were six, you know, yeah, six too long, right? there you go. But really, it was very watered down material, wasn't it? Much rehashing from the old Oprah Winfrey stuff, you know? And basically, who did they wheel on? A friend of Meghan's, wow, they're going to be controversial. Some niece that we'd never heard of. There were hardly star mega names. Netflix were promised big names. We're talking the likes of Michelle Obama, you know, the Hillary Clintons, everybody coming out to back them up back their story. It didn't happen. And then Harry released the book. Now, what Netflix bosses are saying is simply this. Where were all those revelations for our money? And as ever, we say allegedly. You can understand why they argued, though, and you can understand why they're angry. Because there you have these fights, fisticuffs, fallouts, last moments with the Queen, everything that really makes a good docuseries spin. They didn't give them any of that. They saved that for the book. Obviously, they had to because the story is particularly thin. There's so many ways you can only rehash this particular story. But for Harry and Meghan now moving forward, Netflix are seriously looking at exactly what they got for their book. And they're looking at it in a big way and thinking, not a lot. Now, as 2023 comes into the financial year, particularly in April, that's the period that TV bosses decide what they're going to stick with and what they're not. And right now, it literally hangs by a thread. So unless Harry and Meghan can come up with more content that they feel is relevant to the audience of Netflix, as far as making family-friendly viewing, that type of thing, I think both Harry and Meghan are going to find that perhaps Netflix might unsubscribe from them. Now, how would that feel? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.